Your crew filmed them in Washington, D.C. on the evening of January 5th and then on January 6th. On January 5th, the night before the attack, you were with the head of the Proud Boys, Mr. Tario, in Washington, D.C. What happened? Um, we picked up Mr. Tario from jail. Uh, he'd uh, been arrested for carrying uh, some magazines, uh, some long, uh, some extra capacity magazines, and uh, for the, he took responsibility for the burning of the uh, Black Lives Matter flag that was stolen from the church um, on December the 12th. Um, we, um, we were attempting to get an interview with Mr. Tario. Um, we had no idea of any of the events that were going to subsequently happen. Um, uh, we drove him to pick up his bags from the property department of the police, which is just south of the mall. Uh, we picked up his bags and went to get some other bags from the Phoenix Hotel, where we um, encountered Mr. Stuart Rhodes uh, from the Oath Keepers. Um, by the time I'd gone to park the car, my colleague was saying, who'd got into the car with Mr. Tario, that they had moved to a uh, location around the corner, the parking garage of the uh, Hall of Legends, I believe. And um, so we quickly drove over there. We drove down into the parking garage and filmed the scene of Mr. Tario and Mr. Rhodes uh, and certain other individuals um, uh, in that garage. Um, we then continued to follow Mr. Tario. There was some discussion about where he was going to go. He ended up going towards a hotel in Baltimore, and we conducted an interview with him in the hotel room. Um, and then we returned to DC for that night. Uh, in a, um, and what was interesting that night, actually, was that was the first indication that DC was much more um, busy than it had been any other time we'd been here because we couldn't get into the hotels we wanted to and we um, ended up at a hotel that you know was not as satisfactory as we would have hoped. Thank you. So what you're saying is you filmed the meeting between Mr. Tario and Oath Keepers leader, Stuart Rose, right? Indeed. You couldn't hear what was said, but according to the Justice Department indictment of Mr. Tario, a participant referenced the Capitol. Now, on the morning of January 6th, you learned the Proud Boys would gather near the rally schedule to take place near the White House. What time did you meet up with the Proud Boys and what was happening when they met? Um, we met up with the Proud Boys uh, somewhere around 10.30 a.m. and they were starting to walk down the mall uh, in easterly direction towards the Capitol. Um, there was a, 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 a large contingent, more than I had expected, and I was confused to a certain extent why we were walking away from the president's speech because that's what um, I felt we were there to cover. So at 10.30 a.m., uh, that's early in the day. That's even before the President Trump had started speaking. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So how many Proud Boys would you estimate were marching together to the Capitol? Um, a couple of hundred. Potentially, yeah, I'd say a couple of hundred Proud Boys were marching towards the Capitol at that point. At the time, was the area heavily guarded? No, that was, um, we mem I remember we walked past the, we walked down the mall, we walked to the ref right of the reflecting pool, and then north along the road that leads to the Peace Circle. And as we were walking past the Peace Circle, I framed the Proud Boys to the right of my shot with the Capitol behind, and we see one sole police officer um, at the barriers, which are subsequently breached. We then walk up and past a um, tactical unit preparing, and there's, you see that in the film where the man questions their duty and their honor, and you see 
maybe a dozen um, uh, Capitol Police um, putting on their riot gear. So how would you describe the atmosphere at that, that time? The atmosphere was, it seemed to be much darker. I, I make efforts to create um, a familiarity between myself and my subjects to you know, make them feel comfortable. And um, the, the atmosphere was much darker than, at this day than, than had been in these, other, in, these other, in these other days. And there was also a contingent of Proud Boys that I hadn't met before from Arizona who appeared to wear these orange hats um, and had orange armbands. So when the Proud Boys went back down the hill to the Peace Circle, did a larger crowd start together? Well, no, first of all, we went round to the back and down the steps, and we took some photographs on the east side of the Capitol, uh, and then we went for lunch. We went for tacos. So, Mr. Quested, you're a journalist, so you are careful to stick to things that you have observed. But what you've told us is highly relevant. Let me highlight a few key facts that you and others have provided the committee. First, there was a large group of proud boys present at the Capitol. We know that from multiple sources. You now estimate that there were around 250 uh, to 300 individuals that you've testified. They weren't there for President Trump's speech. We know this because they left that area to march toward the Capitol before the speech began. They walked around the Capitol that morning. I'm concerned this allowed them to see what defenses were in place and where weaknesses might be. And they decided to launch their attack at the Peace Circle, which is the front door of the Capitol complex. It's the first security perimeter that those marching from the ellipse would have to come to as they moved toward the Capitol. The Peace Circle walkway was, walkway was always where the thousands of angry Trump supporters would arrive after President Trump sent them from the ellipse. The Proud Boys timed their attack to the moments before the start of the joint session in the Capitol, which is also where President Trump directed the angry mob, quote, we fight like hell, end quote. He told them before sending them down Pennsylvania Avenue, right to where the Proud Boys gathered and where you were filming. Now, a central question is whether the attack on the Capitol was coordinated and planned. What you witnessed is what a coordinated and planned effort would look like. It was the culmination of a months long effort spearheaded by President Trump. Mr. Quested, thank you for your eyewitness account of the lead up to the breach of the peace circle. 